Am I the asshole for not forgiving a guy even though he begged and cried? I, 16F, am going into my last year of high school. I have a big friend group of many people. In grade 9 I was stuck in class with a guy who wasn't kind to me. For reference I am legally blind in my left eye and so have no depth perception. Due to this I'm scared of the dark, heights and things I can't see. So in grade 9 this guy let's call him Carl, took every opportunity to be rude to me. I was struggling with body image so wasn't eating. I was finally getting help and we watched a video about eating disorders so my teacher, without revealing the reason was me, could help the class understand that you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. During this he said that people should just eat if they're not eating enough. This destroyed me and I kinda fell again. Combine this with him also telling me I was, too big. Other things he did included jumping up on my blind side to scare me, swinging objects on my good side despite knowing it scared me, and also looking at me shoes with holes and telling me to just buy new shoes because they're cheap at Walmart. My feet are too wide and I'm poor. Well last year, when schools in my area were reopened, he started sitting with my group of friends, this was grade 11. I was still mad about what he had been saying to me in grade 9 so every time he came over I left. One day my friends asked me why and I explained. They decided since I was uncomfortable he had to go so they told him they didn't want him there since he was making people uncomfortable. One friend, let's call her Lacey, left with him. Well one day she told him I was mad about stuff he did in grade 9. He came to us and apologized for calling people fat, slow, and other horrible stuff. Blamed his parents' separation for what he had said to me, and then said two years is too long to hold a grudge. I stood up and told him that what he said destroyed me, I couldn't stand hearing his voice or seeing his face, and that a separation shouldn't cause him to be hateful to others, and that I could understand if I had a happy family but that he knew I lived in a single parent household and why. Well Carl started crying and begging me to forgive me, saying he didn't want to be hated by his friends. I said we were never friends and my friends made him leave. Lacey got mad telling me to accept the apology and move on, she was then forced to leave and we left it at that. But according to my friends who know him he's been asking how to contact me online because he doesn't want to go into grade 12, our final year, with me holding a grudge and wants to make it right. I think I might be the asshole because it was a few years ago and he has apologized several times for saying what he did. So Reddit am I the asshole? Edit to add. It's been mentioned in the comments so I'll put it here. Lacey and Carl have been friends since kindergarten have only known them since grade 9, they've been together for a long time. The two also knew my current friend group. I'm only there because my BFF let's call them Avery, noticed I was alone and them and their boyfriend inserted me into the friend group and I was accepted. Carl was in another friend group at the time but they had almost all moved away or graduated so he came back to them in grade 11. Edit 2. For those wondering yes I'm in counseling to help with the trauma. I was in counseling at the school before but due to the comments by him left because I thought I was wasting the counselor's time and that other people with real problems needed him more. I went back in grade 10 after my friends convinced me and have been ever since. Not the asshole. Your past bully is trying to bully you, again, into forgiving him so he can look good. Not the asshole. People don't get to decide when, or if, you forgive them. Only you can decide that. Not the asshole, he doesn't get to wipe the past because it's inconvenient for him now. He only apologized to be part of the group. Do what you feel is right, if it is to forgive then forgive, if not you don't have to be around him. I respect your friends for caring about your boundaries. Not the asshole when you mistreat someone if you grow you apologize, but that doesn't mean they have to forgive you. They don't determine how long their actions hurt someone and they don't determine how long it takes someone to feel better, assuming they ever do. Hopefully he is always embarrassed by this and it makes him a better person in the future, but he doesn't dictate your emotions. I personally believe bullies deserve to carry that weight with them like their victims do. He should always feel shame at who he was last year. It is not your job to absolve him of that. Nah. You have the right to not accept an apology if you don't want to, but it sounds like Carl is genuinely sorry for his actions. For what it's worth, I was a high school teacher for 16 years and there is a really big difference in the capacity for empathy between 9th graders and 11th graders. It's just how brains develop at that age. You still don't have to forgive him, but just know that he may only now be capable of seeing the impact his actions have had on you. What you choose to do with that info is totally up to you. Not the asshole. You are under no obligation to forgive someone who bullied you.
If I had to guess, the reason he is latching onto your friend group is because he has no one else left willing to put up with his poor behavior. His parents' separation is absolutely no excuse. Plenty of kids have parents who get divorced and none of them resort to calling other people fat and slow or harassing them in class. Not the asshole. These are simply consequences for his actions. Sure, he may be a different person now. But you shouldn't have to forgive him, considering the negative impact his comments had on your life. Not the asshole. An apology is simply expressing he's sorry for what he did. He's not sorry, since he not only avoided accountability but said two years is too long to hold a grudge. It's not a grudge, and it's unacceptable that he expects you to get over it for his convenience. Am I the asshole for wanting to replace my mo? So, I, 30 female, am engaged and originally had asked my childhood best friend to be my mo. She's also the godmother to my children. We've known each other since we were five and our grandparents live next door to each other, how we met. She has stayed in our hometown her whole life and I had moved several times. We stayed in touch and even if we went a while without talking, because life, when we would talk it's like we picked up where we left off. She had said yes to being my mo and I reassured her she wouldn't have to do anything but pick her dress. If she wanted to do more she was welcome to, but I didn't expect it. That was 2018. Long engagement so fh and I can save up to pay everything up front. 2019 before covid was a thing here I had asked her if she could help me. I was going to have surgery and needed a sitter. I asked a month before surgery. I lived 2.53 hours away so it wasn't an issue with distance. She said she would talk to her boss and see if she could get the day off. Awesome. We chat a bit more then hang up saying she'd get back to me. A few days go by, so I check in. I got no response. A week, still nothing. It gets to where I only have a week until surgery. I text her, call her, and still nothing. I even let her know I was fine if she couldn't but I needed to know so I could find another sitter. Day of my surgery comes and I have no sitter. FH was my ride and can't leave once he's there just in case something happens. We had to bring our toddler with us. Toddler couldn't be in the building, smaller building specifically for surgery. So FH and toddler had to sit in the car for almost two hours. Not a big deal, but not ideal. When I'm done and gotten some rest I text her again. I told her surgery went well and I hope she's doing okay too. I never heard from her. I got upset that she ghosted me so I deleted her number and removed her on social media. I recently told my FH I need to pick a new mo and he said I'm overreacting. People get busy and can forget to reply then just don't because it's been so long. It's been two years now though with no word. Am I overreacting or is it okay to ask someone else? Edit. She is fine. Our families are really close and I get updates on her. Nothing major happened where she was hurt or sick or anything like that. I know a lot of you are asking about that, but I'm not kidding when I say I would have driven myself to our hometown after surgery if something happened to her. When I found out she was okay is when I got upset and hurt that I wasn't even worth a text saying she was okay from her. Edit 2. A few were asking about the babysitting issue. I did actually look for another sitter a week before my surgery when my friend didn't respond. My child is classified as special needs. Developmental delay from being born early, little communication skills, and recently developed seizures, and not everyone can handle that. The only other people we trusted to babysit were either busy or have told us in the past that they would never babysit for any reason. They just weren't comfortable doing so. We are 100% okay with that. The lack of babysitter wasn't the issue. It was being ghosted after I repeatedly said it was fine if I needed to find someone else and would reach out just to check in on her. Not the asshole. But honestly, you should have lined up another sitter when she didn't get back to you instead of just hoping she would the day before your surgery. FDH is being ridiculous. If you don't replace her, you're not going to have a mo because she 100% won't show up. Not the asshole, it's been literally two years. Although I will ask, have you checked in on her through other people to make sure she's okay? Not the asshole after two years I'm pretty sure you can safely assume she has dropped out of your wedding in your life. Not the asshole. She ghosted you for no reason. You even stated that you didn't care if she couldn't just to let you know. I think by replacing her she'll be hurt but to be honest it sounds like your friendship has outlived itself. Not the asshole. There's forgetting to reply and then there is ignoring someone. Pick a new mo and carry on like she doesn't exist. I don't think you're overreacting here. How can she be your mo if she won't even talk to you? Being a bridesmaid at a wedding is an event that requires planning and communication. 
even if she wasn't going to be the one arranging things. If it's been two years and you haven't heard from her, I doubt she wants to be your mo anymore anyway. Move on and find someone who has a little more decency. And I'm totally with you that I would rather have someone respond, even if it's not the answer I want to get rather than being ignored. It's just so rude. Dot. Not the asshole. Info. Did she ever tell you why? Have you still not heard from her? To go from best friends since you're five, godmother of children, etc. to no contact overnight sounds like there is more going on. Info. Have you reached out to other people who know her to see if she's okay? Do you know if something happened to her? Am I the asshole for not making a vegetarian alternative for my wife? Hi. This is my first time posting here so apologies if I make any mistakes. Please do not post this anywhere else. I, 35 female, have been with my wife, 34 female, for about 10 years. We get along great, and we usually don't have any issues with anything. Ever since we moved in together, I have done most of the cooking. She'll bake cookies or something occasionally but I honestly can't remember the last time she baked an actual meal. Which is fine, I enjoy cooking and have no problem with the arrangement. In return she does a lot of the cleaning of the house, I do clean up after myself in the kitchen. About six months ago, she decided she wanted to be a vegetarian. I supported her and didn't make meals with meat in them, and if I did I left it out and only added it to my portion of the meal, like if I made omelets I'd only add meat to mine. I did this for about three or four months. Then she started eating meat again. When we went out to a restaurant or got takeout because I didn't feel like cooking, she'd get a steak or fish. But she wouldn't eat anything I made with meat in it, or anything I made that touched meat. I honestly was hurt as she would eat something from a restaurant but not something extremely similar that I made. She's never said anything about the food I make being bad and no one has ever said my food is not good. I make a lot of the food for family gatherings and stuff and everyone loves it. My nieces who are 5 and 7 eat the food I make, and they're extremely picky. A week ago we were with her family and I made all the food. I made a main dish with meat, and then also some vegetables and rolls. The main dish would be completely different without meat and so I didn't make some without meat. When I put the food on the table she asked if there was anything that didn't have meat. I told her there were vegetables and rolls. She seemed upset and asked me if I expected her to just eat that for a dinner and that it wasn't nearly enough. I basically said I wasn't going to make a whole new main dish just for her and that she could eat the meal with the meat or not eat it, but I wasn't making anything else. She got pissed and said that I had offered to make food and that I should make something everyone could eat. I told her that I made the dish because it was her father's birthday and he had requested it. She told me that if I wasn't going to accommodate her and make something else for her I should just leave. So I left. I called a someone to pick me up and went back to the house. She's been avoiding me since and not eating at the same time as me. She'll either eat leftovers or just make something else, but eat either later or earlier. Was I the asshole to make something non-vegetarian and not provide an vegetarian alternative of a main dish? Edit I read a lot of the comments last night. This morning I sat her down and talked to her about it. She said that the specific type of meat I get, not that it's bad, it makes her feel somewhat sick. So she'll start coming when I go get meat so I can avoid getting anything that may make her sick. Thanks to everyone who responded to the post. Not the asshole but why have you never talked to her about this? You shouldn't have picked a family dinner for this issue to rise, and I think you knew it would. Also, so she's a vegetarian at will? Esh. Honestly it's a little strange that you didn't mention it to her beforehand. It kind of seems like you used this opportunity to call out your wife's flexible vegetarianism rather than talk about how you felt one-on-one -on -one beforehand. Generally it's up to the person with the restrictions to make sure they're accommodated for but I don't think this realistically should extend to partners. Your wife's flip-flopping around what she can and can't eat is pretty irritating. Plus telling you to accommodate her or leave was incredibly rude. For a couple who have known each other 10 years you don't seem to know how to talk to each other. Edit. Thank you so much for my awards. Really made me smile. Your wife is TA for making you leave the family dinner how was everyone else okay with this? She is also TA for not being a vegetarian anymore and yet demanding that you cook veg for her. You are not the asshole. So. Dot she eats meat. Just not your meat. Lol. And only when it suits her to not eat meat. Not the asshole if there's something about the way you prepare meat, or the specific type of meat you use that she doesn't like then she should communicate that and maybe work out a compromise. However, she's a full-grown adult. Dot she can eat the parts of the meal she likes, 
or find herself something else to eat if she's not going to eat what you made. Actually, that's what I expect most kids to do too after about age 10. Not the asshole. It was a birthday meal and you made what her dad asked for. Which was very nice. She really shouldn't have made a scene at his birthday dinner. She wasn't going to starve to death. So she still eats meat when she goes out to a restaurant but not at home? Not the asshole, I wanna say. Being a vegetarian is a commitment, and it sounds like your wife only wants to commit when it's inconvenient for you. Oftentimes, food, eating issues stem from other things, so it's likely this isn't about the meat. I was vegetarian for almost 10 years, and there is no way I would have eaten meat in a restaurant, as far as I'm concerned if you eat meat you aren't a vegetarian. Period. Not the asshole. Your wife is awful picky for so moan that can't even cook their own food, and is clearly not a vegetarian. Also, there was food she could eat. Vegetarians often only eat sides at large gatherings. Which is usually fruits and vegetables anyway, so what's the problem? I'm a bit confused but going with not the asshole. Either she is vegetarian or she's not, I say this as someone who has been a vegetarian for nearly 20 years. You don't just pick and choose when it's convenient. If she'll eat meat while out, then it's ridiculous to expect you to continue making meat-free portions. I would honestly tell her that if she wants to commit to vegetarianism then you're fully willing to continue making food for her, but if she is going to keep eating meat whenever it's convenient then you're not putting in the extra work. Am I the asshole for not give my ex the title to a car for our son? My son turned 16 and is taking his driving test in a few days. My current partner and I decide we'll give him her old car to drive. It's in good shape and has no problems but it's 10 years old. So, we go out and find a new car for her and clean up the old one for my son. We transfer the title from her to me, so I own the car now. And hash x200b. The ex was cool at first. She picks it up and takes it to her house. It's paid for, title and registration, too. No out-of-pocket expense for her. All she has to do is get insurance for our son. Days later she says she's having issues getting insurance. They need my driver license number. Why would they need that? I asked. She gives some bullshit reason. Fine, whatever, I give her my license number. It would just be easier if you transfer the car to my name. I tell her no, I want to keep ownership. I don't want her selling the car or keeping it after our son no longer needs it. All you need to do is get insurance, I tell her. You don't need to own the car, she tells me she doesn't want to insure a car she doesn't own. What if our son gets in an accident or bangs it up? I don't want my insurance to go up on a car I don't own. Your insurance will go up whether you own the car or not, I tell her. Why don't you put him on your insurance, she says. I tell her I can't because he doesn't live with me, he lives with you, so I can't put him on my policy, not sure if this is true but I think it is. And hash x200b. It would just be easier if the car was in my name. Give me half the cost of the car and I'll transfer the title to you. I look up the car on Kelly Blue Book and it ranges from $3,000-$5,000. I tell her to give me $2,500. She asks why she should pay for a car that's free. I tell her because it wasn't free. I bought a new car for my partner and paid for her down payment. While technically, our son's car didn't cost anything, we wouldn't have bought a new car if our son didn't need one. So there's cost associated. And when he's done with it, I get the car back if it's in my name. She says she's not paying anything for a free car. Okay I tell her then I keep the title. Seems simple to me and hash x200b. She decides she just no longer wants the free car. She'll go out and buy one for our son herself. Then she tells me to come get the car. I tell her she has to bring it back because I can't pick up a car by myself. She refuses to bring it back to me and it's still at her house. And hash x200b. So, am I the asshole for refusing to give her the title to a car just to make it easier for her to get it insured? I feel like I was more than fair. I paid for the title transfer, the registration, and plates for the car. All my ex had to do was insure it for our son, which she would have to do regardless of what car he drives. Now, she has to find a car, buy it, get it registered, get plates, and insure it, potentially costing her thousands. She could have had a free car but was too stubborn to take it. Or, she could have gotten a car for $2,500, but she was too stubborn to take that. God. I do not miss being under 18 y, o oh, with divorce parents. Always dumb petty shit like this. Not the asshole for not putting the car into x name. Why not put the car into your kid's name? Problem solved. Neither of you own it now.
Not the asshole, but I feel like we're not getting the full story here. I'm pretty sure you can insure a car that isn't for someone who lives with you. How do you think kids on their parents' plan at college do it? I'd say insure the car and give it to your son as a gift from you and move on. It doesn't seem worth fighting over. Why do you want Urx to insure it anyways? If you are so concerned about your rates going up B, C your kid crashed. Maybe you should be giving him some extra driving training. They do classes and stuff. You are the asshole. I write insurance. If you purchased the car, but want her to insure it, make up a lease and have her sign it saying she will provide insurance for your car or else no insurer will want that. That might even be hard to insure because that's weird for personal risks and also will cause a gap with liability and also personal injury protection depending where you live look into drive other car coverage and broaden PIP. You need financial interest in something to insure it. Look into titled, non-owned policies and you might find what you're looking for, but they're not cheap combined with a driver who is 16. Not the asshole for not wanting to give her the car, but you deaf. Have a shitty attitude about it. It's a real problem I don't think anyone would it's not easy and expensive to insure a vehicle not owned by the policyholder. You'll have to get the insurance, or give it to your son and have him get insurance himself if he can. You are the asshole. And hash x200b. If you give your son a car, insure it. She has no duty to do that. You are the asshole. Your poor kid. I can definitely see why your marriage failed. You own the car. You need insure the car. You can ask her to help pay for the insurance. You are the asshole. You should have retitled the car in your name and your son's, or in your son's name with you as the lion holder if you are concerned about it being sold without your input. You are asking your ex to accept responsibility for a car which neither she or your son own. Insurance companies will often refuse to pay up if the insured party isn't the owner and I'm surprised that her underwriter was even willing to write a policy for a vehicle entirely owned by a third party. Everyone sucks here I think. It seems like you are both being difficult about the whole thing.